take action on the consent agenda. Following action on the consent agenda, the County Planning Commission will continue with the regular agenda items. Once again, make sure all your cell phones and communication devices are turned off. Uh, any final action taken on the conditional use permits will take effect five working days following this meeting unless a written appeal of the County Commission's decision is filed at the Planning Office by April 4th at 5 p.m. In the event of an appeal, the decision will be referred to the County Commission for a hearing on April 19th on or after 9 a.m. in the morning. Any final action taken on the rezoning application tonight will be referred to the County Commission for a public hearing on April 26th at or after 9 a.m. in the morning. Meetings in the County Commission are held in this same room. This time the Planning Commission will consider the consent agenda and the minutes of the February 22nd plan, uh, meeting are included as part of the consent agenda. And I know Commissioner Even was going to be recused for the, from the consent agenda since he has an item on that. Leave now. We need you for. He'll be back. Uh, are there any objections from the Planning Commission members on any of the items on the consent agenda? I have a question on item uh, two, Mr. Chair. Okay, you'd like to bring that forth then? Just for a second, I think, yeah. Okay. Item question. two. Okay. Any others? If not, I will read each item. And if anyone in the audience has a concern about any of the items on the consent agenda, please bring them up and they will be moved to the regular agenda. Item one was the approval of the minutes. Item two has been moved to the regular agenda. Item three is a conditional use permit number 1612 to allow agricultural equipment repair and seed warehouse, uh, which is basically located at uh, 26493 456th Avenue or Pumpkin Center is the easiest way of saying that is where it is at. Any objections from the audience on that item? If not, item number four, conditional use permit number 1615 to exceed 1,200 square feet of total building accessory, requesting 2,400 square feet. Petitioners uh, Christy Labor uh, the, is located at 25673 481st Avenue, approximately three and a half miles north of Brandon. Anyone in the audience object to that one? If not, we will move item two and the consent agenda, we need to move for approval of the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a, a motion and a second for approval of the consent agenda. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Consent agenda is approved. And we will move item two. We need a motion for the new agenda with item two on the regular agenda. That's my motion. Okay, we have a second. second. We have a motion for approval of the current agenda. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And we will move right to item number two. Mr. Kevin. Chairman, yes. I, I, I just have a question about is there an existing eligibility or are we creating one? That's okay. That's a good question. Okay. Well, since that's the question, um, I'll get right to it. The, the building eligibility system, as we all know, is one building eligibility per 40, 40, uh, per quarter, quarter acres, or section, or 40 acres. Um, this, the other caveat in there is if it, there's a pla platted lot or a lot of record that was platted prior to that special date in 1989, uh, then that received a building eligibility. If it was platted between 79 and 89, uh, then there was this kind of limbo area where everything that wasn't platted had to be approved by conditional use. And this is, I'm assuming, is an unplatted leftover of that result. Hence why we have to have a conditional use permit for this but it has building eligibility. But it has a building eligibility. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, unless uh, a member of the audience objects, my questions are answered. Okay. Anyone in the audience want to object to the issue? Otherwise, we'll call for a vote on this issue. I make a motion to approve. Okay. Second that motion. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to uh, approve item number two. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Same sign. Okay, and I failed to mention if your item was three or four that has been approved and you are free to go. 
as we move into item number five, which is the rezoning. 1602, Office of Highways 42 and 483rd, approximately three miles east of Sioux Falls. All right, so this is a rezone. Oh, Kevin Hookman, County Planning Department. Uh, this is a rezoning request, uh, and it's near Rowena. Um, as we get the picture up, the petitioner is requesting to rezone approximately nine acres from A1 Agriculture to C Commercial. The uh, parcel is approximately 16 acres in size, so uh, the majority of the, um, the parcel will be rezoned. Uh, the remaining part of the, the parcel is not being rezoned in order to preserve five building eligibilities that are located on the west side, closer to Rowena. Uh, the property is location in a, is adjacent to the east side of Rowena and approximately 800 feet uh, of northern property line abuts uh, Highway 42, and that's the complete property. Uh, Pardon the me, Kevin, there, we're not seeing it uh, on our screen down here. We're, we're getting a, up there? Okay. a blank it's screen. It's up there, I guess. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the big, the big screen in front of us isn't. Right now. Just says invalid format. <laughs> Are we shut that one off? For the audience, we have the same screen uh, behind the desk up here. That's what we look at. <clears throat> well, maybe we can describe it off of your yeah, we have a picture of packet. It. And you'll see in your materials, uh, the rezoning is highlighting only the portion that is being requested to be re rezoned and not the larger parcel. The remaining parcel goes all the way over to Rowena. How many acres is that again? So the total parcel is 16 acres. And they're requesting to rezone approximately nine of those 16 acres. The, it's located at the intersection of Highway 42 and County Highway uh, 111 or 483rd Street, both of which are hard surfaced uh, paved roads. The applicant would like to acquire, uh, would have to require permission from bo either side to get an access, which would likely be off of the County Highway uh, as it's close proximity to the intersection. <laughs> Uh, many resident residential dwellings are located in close proximity to this uh, proposed site uh, because it's located next to the unincorporated Rowena. Uh, the closest uh, non-agricultural uh, use or non-commercial use is a 10-acre farm located immediately south of the property. Uh, and this property does have its own buffer set on it, as you can, I don't know if you can see it is up there yet. Yes, it is. Okay, and you can see some uh, trees, a couple layers of trees. There are rows of trees that kind of buffer it, which is on its own property uh, from the commercial area. The subject is located within the Red Rock Corridor, and in the Red Rock Corridor, which is located along the entire stretch of Highway 42 and has undergone additional planning, uh, in this Red Rock Corridor, it is uh, deemed permissible or desirable to rezone this area to commercial. The petitioner will have to arrange for utilities to extend to any development uh, in the proposed district, and no sanitary sewer, bowl, sewer is available at the site at this time, so it would have to have on-site sewer, uh, which will also have to be approved by the uh, state DENR, Department of Natural Resources environment and natural resources. The Envision 2035 Comprehensive Plan recognizes Rowena as a rural service area community, which is, as part of this de definition, designation, typical uses include limited convenience commercial businesses. This promotional proposed commercial site would be located at an intersection of state highway and county highway, which is desirable for access and to avoid strip style, devel style development along major street. Uh, the rezoning is generally 
meets the policies and objectives of the comprehensive plan and the site is located within a rural service area within the designated commercial area of the Red Rock Corridor future land use plan. So staff recommends approval of rezoning 1602 to rezone the property from A1 agricultural to C commercial. You know, here's there's uh, the petitioner submitted <coughs> document. Uh, some photos, since this was deferred from the previous month, um, you can see kind of along the highway there, uh, it slopes upward to the south. This is looking down the highway, the county highway looking north, um, and you can see that slope a little bit more, uh, but it's a pretty clear sight line from there. And this is from the kind of the ridge, the very top of the ridge looking northwest. Uh, this is looking uh, across the south property line um, at the, the existing tree grove on the neighboring property. And you can see that hill is pretty extensive. And then this is looking from the, uh, the road on the south. I can't recall what street number that is, the township road. Uh, and you can see Rowena on the left. And much of what you can see from the top of the hill uh, beyond that top of the hill is going to be the, the commercial area. Uh, again, kind of that beyond the top of the hill. So, is there Kevin a question? Would, uh, you, you had mentioned <coughs> would any of our requirements of the Red Rock corridor, they would apply to the site since it's adjacent to Highway 42 then? So, so any um, additional zoning requirements that is applied to the Red Rock Corridor, such as um, the signage, the signage or design um, uh, differences, like uh, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but they have to have so many feet of landscaping uh, will have to apply to this site. Okay. Questions? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, you've indicated it was on the well on the information I got 16 acres but we're only concerned with nine acres is that correct that we can change the commercial yep just the what's highlighted in red here okay. um, you've also indicated that partially that might at some time be rezoned com or residential the petitioner has expressed that he would like to develop his five building eligibilities um, and there is a possibility he may request uh, residential uh, rezoning as part of that development um, and yeah, he has six acres, and if he has a rural residential, he can have potentially six houses there, one per one acre. So if he does rezone the rest of it, that would be the potential. Well, he, he'd have to come back to you to do that? To he do would have to come back here to rezone the rest. But he does have the five eligibilities currently. Okay. Any other questions of staff? Are we losing you, Commissioner Barth? This is a long evening, I, I understand that. The petitioner here. Come forward, please. State your name and address. Hello, my name is Jason Klein, uh, 401 North Jeremy Circle in Sioux Falls. Um, we've owned this land for a number of years. Uh, over the years, we get a lot of curious calls about it. Um, of late, we've had what I would think, what I deem to be more serious calls about it, and they're coming with more frequency. So um, I thought it was time to get things started, basically, get the ball rolling. Uh, get the rezoning done so that I can talk seriously with the people about what we can do there. Um, the six acres that I'm, I'm not applying for rezone on right now, um, you're right, there's a, there are five housing eligibilities there. I just don't know what I want to do with them, and I don't really need to rezone that to get these other things started. So I'm just leaving it for now. And I would ask for, uh, you know, when, when our plans become more cl clear in the future, I just ask to have those plans approved when they're clear. Any questions of the petitioner? I got one question. The intersection to the south of your property, that's a pretty major hill that's very blind. If you come over it fast, is that going to be a problem when you're headed north? To the south? So oh, um, or you're headed on the other north. side of the DeWitt farm, the 10 acres. Yes, there is the from DeWitt's place going north. That, that's, that's quite a ways away. Well, um, slippery roads, it's... Um, I, I, I would say it's over the peak of the hill. Actually, it's going down the other way. Uh, you can't you can't see that intersection from our property. But I mean, it's there. That, that's my biggest concern about the whole project. Which, so right now we're just going to zone as commercial. Any conditional use will be separate, right, in the future. 
and then we'll then we address things like site distances, where the driveways go, and all that type of thing. Correct? Okay. Any other questions, petitioner? If not, thank you very much. Thank Any you. Anybody in the audience care to address this? <coughs> State your name and address, please, Mr. Assam. Uh, Sam Assam, 8612 East 10th Street. I'm here on behalf of my sister, uh, my brother-in-law. They're the DeWitts that own the uh, 10 acres. Um, and they've spent the last 20 odd years uh, turning it into a show place. It was a, I don't know if uh, some of you folks knew that area out there. It was an old abandoned house and he has lovingly, and when I say lovingly, I mean lovingly, uh, polished, sanded, and restored that uh, home to its former glory uh, at, at a great deal of expense and an absolutely inordinate amount of time. And yes, he, he planted those trees in there. Uh, never in a million years would they have thought uh, that, that there was commercial contemplated adjacent to it because before when uh, uh, the Funkies owned this prior to their sale on uh, this, there, I think there was uh, 38 uh, platted lots in there, maybe more. I can't remember the exact number on that. Uh, and, and it was all supposed to be residential. And so that's under that pretense, they went out and acquired it. Funkies farmed it, uh, farmed it intensively, and then vacated uh, those, those parcels. They're not, uh, and the DeWitts are not concerned about the corner. The corner down on Highway 42 uh, and the county road probably should be commercial. But, and, and Ms. Delvey, I think you made a real good point you rezone this commercial and I guarantee you he's going to be coming back on the remainder for commercial as well. Why? Because nobody is in their right mind is going to want to live next to commercial zoning. Uh, that's, there, there is no adequate buffer between the residential and the commercial in the, in the normal sense of, of planning. So I don't even understand this deal. I mean, if it was down in the corner, a couple acres, three acres, the, the, right now they have a, a use or a user that wants a couple acres. We know what the use is. It's uh, what is an electrical uh, HVAC installation business. No problem. We know what it is. Put it down on the corner and 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 uh, zone zone a couple acres there. Now, if if uh, the petitioner wants to put a buffer around the Dwit property using his five residential dwelling units so as to avoid um, diminishing substantially the value of the Dwit property. That's also probably going to be okay. I'd have to I'd have to check, but I think that would be fine. So now we got five six acres of a buffer there that he's creating with his own deal, and then he can spread out the other way if he wants. So I just this this is a bad idea, and it's and it's not fair. I mean, the, uh, <coughs> there are a lot of residential units within within uh, close proximity to this parcel, and I think we need to be careful here. And, and I would would ask you respectfully ask you guys to, to think about that if, if you were living on on that site um, the bottom line is there's no buffer and they have the means to do it um, with with their building eligibilities and establishing a residential buffer between this and the commercial thank you mr. chair yes. uh, Sam if I could just ask you so uh, you're not necessarily opposed to it if some of these other things are done to protect uh, the property to the south, right? Correct. And and you think that the residential stuff would work well? Um, what else uh, would would be helpful? Well, I just I think we need a we need a uh, more of a substantial buffer. Uh, you know, we had there's a, there's an expectancy when when they went out there and and, and the general uh, that's all. It's either farms or rural residential, right right in that area, and what they what they didn't buy into is having commercial right next door. So, and I, and I don't think that's fair. So, and, and these gentlemen have the means and have the eligibilities to establish a residential buffer between the DeWitt property and what they would like to have as commercial. Okay, any other questions? Otherwise we'll, okay, thank you, Mr. Hassan. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience that care to address this? Uh, any questions? Let's just ask the petitioner a question while we're at it here. Could you step forward, please? Okay. How would you address what Mr. Asim had to say? 
Well, I'm a little surprised because I talked to Mr. DeWitt before making application, and he was supporting of it. I, well, it was face or to his face. Wife wasn't. I, I, I can't argue about that, but uh, yeah. um, I, I thought he approved of it. Okay. Um, so, as far as providing a buffer, um, you know, it meets the the rural service area issue has been there since I don't know when. That's been it's many many years. Uh, that's indicates uh, commercial use um, on the red I, I personally was on with, with Sam on the Red Rock corridor planning and and we designated this area for that use at that time without any kind of objection mm -hmm. uh, so okay thank you that's yes, my answer Scott, yeah. I, I just refresh everyone's memory on that Red Rock corridor but when you have a commercial development that's adjacent to like uh, a non-commercial use, there is some built-in buffering requirements with <coughs> landscaping. And I, I think it's either 20 or 30 feet with so many trees, but there, and that would be required to be put on the commercial property. So I just will throw that out there, and that may not be as much buffering as the DeWitts would like to see, but there is a little That bit would be in addition to what's currently there on their side. That's correct. It'd be, this would be on yes. the commercial zone property. Yes, go ahead. State your name and address, please. My name is Lori DeWitt, um, 48296 267th Street. And um, you did talk to my husband. Um, kind of caught him off guard, and he came in the house. And he was, you know, when you look at the paper, like I said, the buffer zone or trees, we planted with our hands. We didn't hire it done. Um, our house was. Um, overgrown with wood trees um, we chopped them all down we had 20 out of our 20 some years we had about 15 years of wood we could burn in our fireplaces from wood my husband cut down with his hands um, we have all worked on it including my children for the past 20 years as our investment um, it's looking very nice we're at the point where <laughs> We just finished and now we're kind of having to go back and redo some things so it's it's a never-ending thing it is very lovingly done we love it out there and um, again I if you want to have a business that's whoops sorry that's wonderful up up <laughs> but I really don't want it down especially by the buffer we we plan it it kind of hurts to hear somebody else call it their buffer when we did it um, okay. how many acres is your place right there we have 10 acres okay and it's it's all mowed. It's all taken care of. Sure. Um, I don't want to use up people's time. It's also a little natural resource area there. We get a lot about 40 hummingbirds a year. There's a lot of deer that come in. Um, a lot of monarch butterflies come over there. Um, those are endangered. Um, so it's a it's a little island right there that um, we've worked hard on. Thank you. Thank you. One yes. question. Oh, um, sure. Mr. Wood, have you, ever, have you talked with Mr. Klein about acquiring some, some property to the north of your existing property at all? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else in the audience? Otherwise, we're going to close the floor. Mr. Discussion Mr. Part? Mr. Chair, I guess I'd like to ask Mr. Klein to respond on that. Uh, okay. You know, do you, uh, is there any, uh, you know, would you be willing to uh, work on an additional sort of separation? there uh, whether it's residential or otherwise uh, uh, I don't know what other plans you have for the whole 10 acres obviously if uh, if there's a uh, commercial business on the north end the Red Rock rules prevented from being uh, garishly illuminated and stuff uh, uh, and you know it's certainly it's uh, it's not a dog kennel or is it I mean I mean this <laughs> no, is no it isn't it's a, <laughs> it's a Heating and cooling business with a few well, employees. Well, you know, obviously, uh, uh, nothing is a zoned museum. Changes do happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, is, do you have any thoughts on how you might uh, placate your neighbor here? Well, I, yeah, I, I'm just a little surprised, that's all. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty reasonable in terms of working with people. Um, and, I, and I care about Rowena. Um, you know, my, my family goes back to, you know, the Banning Mill and, and uh, the Andersons that populate Rowena to this day. So I'm very concerned about the welfare of the community. Um, you know, adding services to that part of the county that don't exist so far. And um, you know, it's been a long-term plan. So I, you know, I would say, you know, I, 
I'm not a small person, so I, I would I would buy that that I would walk in the house and and Mr. Dewitt might not give me you know what's all, all on his mind. So um, all, all I can promise is that I would be reasonable. Mr. Chairman, you know I think both sides are a little surprised because you, you show up and tell them you're going to make a development. I'm surprised and I say okay, and then suddenly uh, the other side is surprised that there's an objection. I wonder if deferring action for a month might be uh, 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 something that we could do to allow a better communication because clearly we could talk to each other. Well, you can talk to each other. However, uh, you know, Director Anderson brings up a very good point. Within the zoning ordinance, when you come in for a conditional use permit, you will be planting additional trees on the, on the south side of that property. Yeah. It isn't just what's there now. We put additional requirements on there, and I don't know how many feet it is, but uh, you still have to, you, you know, and it's like, you know, like we hear all the time, you know, I moved to the country for peace and quiet. Well, this is Minnehaha County, and things happen. They just do. And, of course, especially when they want to do a gravel pit, then they really get excited. So, but I think that's where we are Could I right now. Uh, well, we close the floor. I think we're to the point we've discussed this. So in any of the comments, commissioners, where you're at, or if we have a motion, either way. Well, I, I, I believe in what I just said, and so I guess I would make a motion to defer for one month and uh, see if both sides can uh, <coughs> come to a happy medium. We have a motion. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those, any more discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion is deferred for 30 days. Next meeting, I shouldn't say 30 days, the next zoning meeting. Okay. Yep. We have one more. Yep. <coughs> Big one. Yep. So item six to uh, rezoning 1603 zone tracks one, two, three, and four of the addition, a quarter mile north of 475th Avenue and 257th Street intersection, approximately three and a half more miles north of Sioux Falls. Scott Anderson, Planning Director, and this is a request to rezone approximately 81 acres to plan development, uh, which is to be called Cedar Ridge Plan Development. As you're aware, the county utilizes um, several zoning techniques. In addition to rezoning to a specific zoning des designation, we also can create plan development districts, and then this can accomplish um, goals uh, set out uh, within the uh, development or in the guidelines of that plan development. So the applicant is requesting a plan development and has created or is proposing to create a, an area consisting of three sub areas and I will go over those three sub areas for you. Um, generally I would call this a, a maybe like an equestrian a residential development because it consists of three sub, sub areas the first sub area is to consist um, of, this is the current site that as it stands right now. And I'm trying to, this is the, as it sits right now, there is a residence on here, right here, and then there's a large riding arena, which was approved through with a conditional use permit uh, back in, in 2002. So let's, uh, I'll pull up this and then we can talk about these sub areas. The first sub area is sub area A, and the applicant is, uh, this is this, the residential component of that plan development, and the applicant is request is uh, indicating or proposing to locate approximately 16 uh, or up to 16 single family residences in this area, and the, the lot sizes would range from about 1.2 acres to 1.6 acres, and uh, there is a a nice, very nice shelter belt that runs the entire width of the north property boundary between this property and the mobile home park, which is to the north, and I'll show you some pictures of that. Uh, there is, the applicant is proposing um, to use the existing driveway uh, to um, use as a subdivision road. I'm having trouble getting the mouse going here. Here we go. So there, there is an existing driveway which leads back to that existing house which is here. And the applicant is proposing to um, use that driveway as shown in the red here 
to make um, a network of what I would call subdivision roads and an internal loop. Sub area B is the pasture stable area, and that's where that large pasture, uh, that large stable is located. And then this will also be part of that sub area B, which is being utilized for some corrals, some outdoor corrals, and there's some storage area of some horse trailers and hay bales and stuff, and I'll show you pictures of that. The, the uh, stable was constructed in 2003, and it is a large building. It's 18,720 square feet in area. Sub area C, which is this area in here, is proposed to allow for two single family residences and then basically some open space. And they are indicating that they would like to have the uses identified as allowable uses in the agriculture district to sort of be the guidelines of what could also be allowed in this area. Um, I did visit the site on March 15th and South Dakota Highway 115 provides access to the property and there's an existing driveway here. The, Mo the Peterson Mobile Home Park is located directly to the north and that's approximately uh, 40 residential units that sits on 57 acres. Renner, along with, along with several other subdivisions and, and developments, is located approximately uh, one mile generally to the south. And then there are several other residences uh, located in the area. <clears throat> there are two building eligibilities located on this 81 acres. One eligibility is used by this uh, parcel here. Uh, tract 1 has zero eligibilities and Tract 2 has one eligibility. Should the plan development be approved, both these eligibilities would be eliminated and the criteria uh, and site plan adopted as part of the plan development would be followed. The South Dakota Department of Transportation has also reviewed the proposal and has indicated that they will not grant another access approach onto South Dakota Highway 115. The existing driveway uh, is proposed to be um, upgraded into a subdivision road and uh, they indicated that there is adequate site distance at this point uh, right here at, uh, at this point where the driveway is. There's 1,300 feet plus to the north uh, and there's also 1,300 feet south of site distance which is they consider adequate. Uh, they indicated that the current ADT for this section of South Dakota Highway 115 is 4,411 trips per day, and the 20-year ADT is projected to be 6,730. The South Dakota Highway Department classifies this area as the urban fringe area. Um, <clears throat> let's go over, I'll go over some of the slides here for you. Th this shows, once again, um, the proposed, sort of the proposed lot layout of, of the development, if I can get my, once again, this is the existing residence that's there. This is the large horse barn riding arena uh, facility. This is the driveway uh, and basically at the close to the entrance of Highway 115 looking straight uh, east towards the residence and the uh, riding arena. This is the house that um, I'm basically standing near the riding arena looking um, east towards the house. This is the riding arena. This is looking basically north towards the mobile home park. You can see it's quite well sheltered from view from the mobile homes or that development that's to the north by those existing shelter belt trees. This is that storage area which is directly south of the um, riding arena. Uh -oh. Somehow I lost my pictures here. I must have held it, the thing down too long. Well, let's pull it up here. A couple more to show you. While he's reloading, Scott, should we actually have any questions to staff while he's reloading that? Yeah? One for the petition. Okay. Um, I'll go through real quick. 
So here's the, the um, there were some trailers and storage. In, in um, conjunction with the conditional use permit, people board their horses there and then they have their trailers to move <coughs> their horses back and forth. Th this is the trailer area or the storage area. You can see some of the horse corrals, the, the storage. This is, now I'm, um, this is the mobile home park, which is directly to the north. I wanted to sort of give you an idea of the development that's directly adjacent to the property. You can see the um, mobile homes and the development that's there. You can see the number of homes that are there. There's approximately 40. And this is, you know, the development. So um, I'll, be, I'll go back to the plan, and I'd be glad to answer. Well, let me, I should give you the recommendation. So let me get back to the site plan. Um, leave it at this one. Staff's recommending a <coughs> approval of the rezoning request 1603 to create the Cedar Ridge development and um, there are three sub areas and each sub area has uh, its own criteria and it's about three pages long and I, I don't think you want me to read all of this but um, like I said it, each sub area has a list of what's permitted the accessory uses, the parking regulations, the signing requ signage regulations, the density, and then um, one of the things that we did add in there uh, is that uh, that you there is a requirement for a final development plan. So prior to the construction of the first residence, I added that they will need to bring back the the final plan of how they propose to develop the residential area for your approval. And then once again, if they do any kind of development in this sub area C, they would need to bring a plan to you uh, for the proposal because there are a lot of things that are allowed in the ag district, such as windmills and you could have all kinds of things, wind towers. And before they did any kind of development, they would have to bring a development plan for that sub area to you. So I'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. Um, the intent, if I didn't make it clear, was that these residences would have access to the, the stable. They'd have their horses. They could stable them there. It would, it'll be sort of like an equestrian-themed uh, residential development. Any questions at all? Any questions, commissioners? If not, we'll call the petitioner forward. Give you your name and address. Evening, Commissioners. Eric Willardson, Willardson Lund Engineering, 902 South Cleveland, uh, here tonight uh, representing uh, Brad and Laura Wagner. Uh, Brad and Laura also in uh, the audience tonight. Um, as Scott had indicated, uh, they approached me in, in, uh, to approach you to develop their property <coughs> into a uh, plan development district. Um, they currently run the stable and uh, live in the house that's on the property. Uh, they essentially want to continue that same uh, scenario, but they have had some some interest from uh, passers-by, if you will, um, wanting to know if there was lots available out here uh, for this type of a situation. Um, so, and, and I, I agree with Scott, the best way to, to, to kind of set this equestrian type site up is with a, a plan development district. Um, as he indicated, there's right now a plan for 16 lots uh, surrounding it, uh, rural residential, meaning uh, the horses would not be allowed on the rural residential lots, but those people would be able to stable horses at this place or just live across the street from the stable. So we're not asking to turn that sub area A into horse pasture. Um, that would be confined for, for the sub area B. Uh, sub area C again, uh, there's two eligibilities on the site and essentially what we're saying is um, we would wanna keep those two eligibilities in that ag district, uh, one being the house they live in now and, uh, and the rest of it to the east, uh, a sub area uh, or, or an area that they may build a, a future home site at, but that they could sell theirs then and, and build a new house. Um, as Scott indicated, we have met with DOT. Uh, DOT is, has been in communication with the county. Um, they're not in favor of an additional access point with the curve 
of the, the highway right there. It doesn't allow for it. Uh, they're okay with the change in use on this one. And we also contacted uh, Minnehaha County Rural Water. They have no problem of adequate service to service the lots that are proposed. Um, and, I, and I believe Scott, or I'm sorry, Brad is here and he has met with a couple of the neighbors uh, in the area. I don't know if any of those are here tonight, but uh, it sounded like the, uh, the uh, manufactured homes to the north, uh, there's a, like I say, an adequate buffer there. Uh, didn't seem to have issues with it. And I guess uh, we think it's a, a, a good use for the property and, and would be a <coughs> good addition to Minneapolis County. With that I would answer any questions you might have. Okay, Bill, Chairman. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Wilson, uh, the one question I had was the same one that staff had, and that's around future development of that sub area C is in Charlie. And uh, currently you indicated that it may be just reserved for uh, future building of maybe one home. Uh, I don't know if the Wagners are, are they looked at this. Um, if they decided to make it look like sub area A and plot that out, uh, would that pose any problems with the DOT and road access and with additional? Uh, didn't traffic? didn't seem like at this time DOT uh, wasn't really concerned about the the traffic impact. Only the site distance worked. Okay. Um, they kind of just wanted to reserve it as that that's kind of their little niche area, if you will. It's kind of screened off with some trees and in the area that, that they've just looked at as, as a future building site. Um, obviously, if, if we, they did want to expand into that, we'd be back in front of this board uh, rezoning that sub area C into uh, sub area B, um, you know, and have to change it. But right now, what they're just seeking to do is to, one, keep their house that they have, uh, and two, be able to build a new one. Uh, and there's two eligibilities on on the ag property now and and so we just keep those two uh, and that's one of the sub area regs is that there would only be two eligibilities in that area thank you unless it was reasonable correct any other questions of the petitioner i have a couple first one this cannot be affiliated with any sanitary sewer district correct that's correct then the questions of the petitioner is why do they think we should gift them 16 housing eligibilities because that's basically, I don't care what you call this, plan developments, whatever, this is gifting housing eligibilities. The place to the north was done before we had zoning. That would never get approved today. I was on the board when we approved the stable back in 2003. It's fine, it's stable, it's just ag, that's what it's for. However, it's not for increased density on a highway that's already, as you read there, uh, average daily transit counts or whatever that stands for on uh, a highway when we dealt with the stuff a half a mile south here what do we deal with traffic 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 so now let's throw some more traffic on there and that's what I would have a deep concern with doing this just because you got a stable big deal let's put a flagpole out there in the middle and build houses around it what's the difference as far as I'm concerned this isn't any special use it's a stable well certainly rural residential development rural residential style living is a very desirable uh, way to live in this part of the country um, it's what you just define, look find it's what you define rural residential living as my definition is if I can throw a rock on my neighbor's house from my driveway that's not rural that's my definition everybody has their own definitions well this county defines one acre rural residential as one acre and larger the state of South Dakota defines rural residential and the requirement for an on-site septic st tank system, drain field system, as one acre or larger. All of these lots meet that requirement, meet Minnehaha County standards, meet South Dakota DENR standards, and rural residential is a zoning district in this county. Any other questions of the petitioner? Anyone else in the audience care to address this? If not, don't be. Do you have shy. any additional <laughs> questions? I have a question. Yes. Okay. I'm confused because in the notes on page two, um, there's reference that should this be approved, the both eligibilities would be eliminated, and the criteria and the site plan 
as part of the development would be followed. And, and, and so, and so. Gets up and says that they're, they're, I think what he really means to say is that the applicants want the ability to have two residences on that in that C sub area C. So we don't have any more. Build, there, not, there are no more building eligibilities. It, it will follow what we would call the the plan. And so <coughs> sub area C. We'll go here. Let me get back up. So, uh, let's back up one more. Okay. So, sub area A will, if you look at, um, if you look at, uh, at page A, or sorry, if you look at page 4, sub area C, under permitted uses, it says that there's a maximum of two single family dwellings would be allowed. So there, there's a maximum of two there, uh, dwellings that would be allowed. There's one that's already in existence right here. So that would give them the ability to build another residence anywhere in sub area C. So it's not so much as a building eligibility, but, and I know it's probably really splitting hairs but it's not a building eligibility. They're not getting a building eligibility. It's being rezoned to a planned development which will allow for two residences to be constructed anywhere in sub area C. Two additional. Two total. Two. two a maximum of two total. Additional. So one additional. There is already one there. And furthermore, they would only get 16 in this area sub A, which brings you to a total of 18 residences. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Mr. Chair, I have a question for you. Yes. Because uh, I think uh, all of us uh, have to rely on our institutional memory at some point. But you may recall we had that uh, situation on Wall Lake where this uh, just tiny, uh, this acreage With barely. Yes, just right. touched uh, the uh, beach uh, and uh, and uh, so it never was built but it did get approved was that uh, a similar situation to this where there's an existing they had two housing eligibilities I believe but they were going to build ten yeah and uh, uh, but in a sense they were not creating a, a, a something out of the middle of nowhere because there's a fairly dense population circling access to a sanitary sewer district yes they did and uh, if I might ask staff I assume that there would be a road district or something if well, this went forward it's part of the plan development it's, stuff that would be part of the when they come in and plan it they, they have to provide means for maintaining the road so that would be a requirement when they come into the subdivision plan and the road going off the <laughs> state highway would have to be paved for a certain That's distance Well, I, uh, I do uh, feel your pain. Uh, well, I'm for open spaces. There's nothing wrong with what it's being used for right now. And so you're going to put more traffic on Highway 115. It's just granting eligibilities, in my opinion. And there's truth to that at the you same time. don't have time. anything to transfer on there. They've got two eligibilities. We did a six-house development paved west of the West Dean Rose Church, about three miles. It's all paved. It was all done with eligibilities. That's what it's supposed to be. But again, this is adjacent to a fairly, you know, there are more people in that Peterson trailer park than in Sherman, South Dakota. I'm uh, sure there is. But like I say, that was done before we had zoning. So, but we'll call for action. Call the question, I believe is what Wayne would say, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do we have a motion yet? No. Nope. Nope. Yeah, I didn't think so. That's calling the question, I guess. Yeah, my I'm Robert's sorry. rules of order is pretty weak. Call the rules. You called the question. Mr. Chairman, um, being in, you know, no one has ob objected to this outside of us, and uh, you know, certainly there's steps that can be taken for those that want to uh, bring up other concerns, but. 
since the neighbors aren't up in arms or anything, I, I think we can consider moving forward at the same time. That doesn't mean that, uh, that it'll finally uh, go through, but I'll make a motion to uh, approve this at this point. Okay, we need a second, then we'll have further discussion. We have no second. Is there a second? Okay, we have a second. Any further discussion? I, I would just agree with, <laughs> with Mike. Um, my concern is also this is a predominantly agricultural district. Um, we, I don't think it's appropriate land use. I think we're too far away from Sioux Falls for a housing development here. We hinder young farmers who might want to have, um, have cattle operations, hog operations, um, chickens. I think we hamper, hamper young farmers that are in this general farming vicinity. Um, I realize the Peterson uh, trailer park is there, but it would not be approved today. That would not have been allowed. And I'm also surprised that the highway has, the county highway is, the state highway has approved this. I drive that road fairly regularly and I don't believe there's good sight distance when you come around that curve to that road. So for all of these reasons, I will not support this plan development. The only other reason I would come back to is, uh, <coughs> okay, how many more of these are we gonna have? This is precedence once again, which I always bring up precedence, but it precedence becomes the law of the land. And I can think of a few other horse barns around the country, they could do the same thing. Any other Or comments? golf courses, I just. Or golf courses, <laughs> absolutely. They're all there, so. Okay. I'd just like to make one comment, Mike, and it's, it's kind of funny if you ask me, being on the A or livestock side of, for my business, how uh, we get screamed at and hollered at, and people want to build around a stable, which is, I can't figure it out, because there is smell, there's manure, <laughs> there's horses that get out. I just think it's kind of funny. I, I can't support it. I share your mirth because I'm thinking that in 10 years they'll come back and complain to us about it. <laughs> but that's a development issue. Okay, well, we have a motion and a second. We'll call for a vote. All those in uh, favor of the motion to approve signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. 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 Motion fails. Okay. Moving on to our next, we have old business next. What's that? Um, yeah, you'll need a motion to deny. Okay, now we'll need a second, another motion to deny. That's right. I'll make the motion. A motion to deny. Is there a second? second? There's a second. We have a motion and a second to deny the petition. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Unanimous. Motion carried. This is for denial. Okay, now we're into old business. Uh, just a report that. And I would just comment also that at that meeting, in the absence of our chair and vice chair, for the first time in 10 years, I ran the meeting. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Say one thing I hope when he looks at it, if it, this is a storage unit thing, we really need to address lighting on those storage units because people don't realize what downward directional lighting is. They just slap one of those LED lights on the side of the building and call it light, and it just lights up the whole neighborhood. Uh, Okay, so, okay, Scott, let's just ask this question since we have new board members. We have a deal brought up tonight where someone, we don't know if they're in compliance or not. So, what, I'm sure they're wondering, so what happens? Do, is it up to the office to follow through on that? We'll do, we, do we wait for a complaint? Because there is one that I would like you to list, look at as a, as a normal complaint. It's uh, Limoges Construction Incorporated up on the renter project, or yeah, the renter turnoff. There is more junk stacked up along that fence forms and old scaffold and all that and there's no screening at all and I thought that was part of their requirement of any construction outfit is to have screen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so, yeah. 
on the Strawberry Wine. Yeah. We'll have to look into the. We'll have to look into. Um, that one uh, looks terrible. You drive, you go by there in the interstate, you see all this junk out there. It's right next to the to the guys that have all the feed wagons. Yeah. Is where it is. You know, the the hell, the uh, MDE dealer dealer up there. It's just all kinds of stuff there. And I was always surprised it wasn't screened, since we require everyone else to be screened. We'll look into it. That's the only one I had concern about. <coughs> Otherwise, it's ready for adjournment. Oh my goodness, my. My first official meeting, I drug you to almost 10 o'clock. <laughs> Let's make that video work. That <laughs> I, I want to see the video on the on the tree chew up. We haven't had one that's gone it's been this while for a oh, long, it's been time. long, long time. Ten years, at least. <laughs> the last time we had more than two capos in a gravel pit on the <laughs> <laughs> <that's my class. coughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, you did a good job, Mike. Do we need a motion to adjourn? Yes, you made it. You second it. Yep. Second. Favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. So, uh, how are things out east? You don't wanna I don't want to know. <laughs> I think I'm are still flying at Arrowhead you Park. See what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> so, I will. I will